wasn't in the kitchen, I was hoping it blizzard. Well, now, uh, she was dead beat, tired from her trip. I figured I'd just let her sleep, Noah. Yeah, I heard her walk in her room last night until hell knows when. Well, it's getting late. Guess I better wake her up. No, Noah, now, don't do that. I think she had a pretty rough time. Just let her sleep it off. I was kind of hoping she'd cook breakfast. Oh, but if we hadn't croaked this week after we keep you cooking, uh, we'd live through another day. Jimmy just fixed that thing. Don't go breaking it again. Oh, if that dumb kid wants to waste his money on a big radio like this, want to get some good out of it, he can't hear a thing. Well, what do you want to hear? I was hoping somebody would say something about the drought. <laughs> There's only one thing to say. No rain. Yeah, no sign of it neither. Well, cross out another day. Oh, Noah, I wish you wouldn't do that. You in that damn calendar. What are you counting for? When it rains, it rains. You know what I seen this morning, Pop? What? Three more calves down and out. And a couple of heifers. You know what else I had to do? I had to give Sandy and Frank their time. You didn't fire them, did you? No, no, I, I just laid them off till the drought's over. Well, no, you shouldn't have done that. Listen, Pop, you want to take care of the bookkeeping? You're more than welcome. There's the books. Have at it. Oh, Noah, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> now, how do you want your eggs? Uh, what's the best way you can't ruin them? How about raw? I'll take them raw, then. Good morning. Morning, Jimmy. Hey, morning, Jimmy. Morning. Good morning, Pop. Well, Pop, it's just like I said. Just like I told you yesterday. What did you tell me, Jim? Well, Pop, I said to you like this. I said, Pop, the whole world's gonna blow up. I, I said, the world's gonna get all swole up and bust right in our faces. <laughs> you sure about that, Jimmy? Well, you bet I'm sure. You see, it's all got to do with the spots on the sun. Uh-huh. Well, one of these days, one of them spots is gonna get so big that the sun won't be able to shine through. And then, well, brother, bet! Uh, you keep thinking like that, you're gonna miss your breakfast. Well, yeah, ain't no good thinking about it. Just gets me all upset. Holy mackerel, Noah, well, them eggs is raw. Yeah, what about it? What's the matter? You sick? Uh, no, I ain't sick. Well, you sure must be sick if you're eating raw eggs. Oh, he's, he's all right, Jimmy. He just don't like my cooking. Well, why? You cook better than Lizzie. I like the way you cook, Pop. Everything slides down nice and greasy. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. How do you like your eggs? Oh, any old way. Oh, how many? Uh, I guess five or six of them. All right. Jimmy. Huh. Uh, Jimmy, if you'll come up for a minute, I got something to talk to you about. What? Now, last night you could have got yourself into a hat full of trouble. Do we have to talk about that now? Uh, what kind of trouble, Noah? A certain girl named Snooky. Oh, was Snooky at the dance? Was she at the dance? You'd have thought nobody else was there. Uh-huh. She comes riding up in her brand new five-cylinder Essex car, and her hair is so bleached blonde. It ain't bleached. <laughs> don't tell me. Yo Dimby says she comes into his store and buys a pint of peroxide once a month. Well, what's that? I use peroxide for a cut finger. Now, if she got cut that off, and she'd bleed to death. Okay, what <laughs> happened, Jimmy? I'll tell you what happened. Last night around 9.30, I looked around, no Jimmy, uh -huh. and no Snooky. That darn fool, he left out of that dance without even tipping his hat. He went off with that hot pants girl. I didn't go off with her. I went out by myself. Yeah, I was outside looking at that Essex, and pretty soon she come out. She's kind of staring me up and down. She's, I, I asked her, how many cylinders does this Essex got? She says five. But then she asked me, how tall are you? I says six. Before you know it, we're riding in that Essex, and she's got that thing going 40 miles an hour. Man, it was fast. Everything about that girl was fast. <laughs> what do you mean by that, Noah? Just what I'm saying. Uh, now, when the dance is over and they're supposed to go pick Lizzie up at the depot, I had to go looking for him. I know where he was. He was sitting in that girl's car parked outside of Denby's store, and the two of them, I never seen such carryings on. Uh, they were all so twisted up together, I couldn't tell where he ended and Snooky began. <laughs> and if I hadn't come along, hell knows what would have happened. Oh, yeah, hell knows. I could have come home with her little red hat. 
with her what? Oh, she wears a little red hat. Well, why would you come home with a little red hat? It's nothing, nothing. Go on, tell her. No, you quit it. All right, I'll tell her. <laughs> she always wears this little red hat. And last night, Dumbo Hopkinson says, Snooky, you gonna wear that little red hat all your life? And she giggles and says, well, I hope not, Dumbo. I'm hoping to give it to some handsome fellow when, as, and if. <laughs> it ain't funny, Pop. You know what trouble you can get into, kid? Uh, a dumb kid like you, uh, pretty soon she'll have her hooks in you and you'll have to marry her. Well, why don't you let me alone? You hear that, Pop? Maybe that's a good idea, you know what? What's a good idea? To let him alone. Well, yeah, maybe it is. All right, fine. You want to be left alone, kid? You're alone. Well, I don't know what you get so mad about. Oh, you don't, huh? You think I like looking after you? Well, I don't. Always tagging after me all your life. Uh, how do I tie my shoelaces? How do I do long division? Well, if you don't want to come to me for no advice, uh, if you think you're so smart... Well, heck, I ain't saying I'm so smart. I don't mind you telling me how to do it and well, how to figure things out. Uh, thanks. Well, what I mean is, I appreciate it. I just wish you wouldn't holler. All right, boys, that's enough. Hundred and one degrees. Woo, it only cool off at night. I don't mind a hot night. There's something about a hot night that gets kind of, well, stirred up inside. Hey, Bob. Why didn't Lizzie come down and make our breakfast? Uh, let her sleep. She didn't sleep much last night, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. She gets off the train, she comes home, and she starts cleaning her bedroom in the middle of the night. Well, hell, there was no need for that. I cleaned it up real nice for her. Jimmy, when some girls ain't happy, they cry. Lizzie works. What are we going to do about her, Paul? I don't know. Well, we got to do something. Talk to her, and at least mention. All right. Well, who's going to mention it to her? Don't look at me, Pop. I'm not going to talk to her. Well, I'm not going to talk to her either. Would you stop saying the exact same thing Noah says? Speak for yourself. I say what Noah is saying because I agree with him. And when I don't, I spit in his eye. Well, then why don't you talk to her? Because if we tell her, she'll, she'll think we're trying to get rid of her. Well, she'll think the same thing if I do it. Maybe. Maybe. Be. So there. <laughs> but you're her father. It comes to time, the father's got to mention it. Well, I can't do that. I just can't speak up and say, Lizzie, you got to get married. Well, she knows she's got to get married. We all know that. Uh, well, then, it seems there's no point in mentioning anything. Come on, Papa. Come on, Lizzie. Come on, honey. Oh, Lizzie. It's <laughs> so good to be home again. Hey, just what the boys were saying. Sure is good to have you home again, honey. Yeah, it looks like that uh, trip perked you up real nice, Lizzie. You, you looking all dragged out by the heat. Before we left, uh, what was it like in Sweet River? Hotter than hell. <laughs> I don't see nothing funny in her talking like a cow hand. Well, sorry, Noah. That's about all the conversation I've heard for a week. Well, listen, now, how's Uncle Dad and I doing? Yeah, how's all them boys? Well, if, Big. They, if they take after Aunt Ivy, I bet they talk to you here right off. No, they take after Uncle Ned. They just grunt. Which one of them boys is the best looking, Lizzie? Oh, I guess Pete. You know, I never could keep them boys straight. Now, which one is Pete? Well, he's the one with the yellow hair. Oh, yellow hair's yeah. nice in a man? Yeah, it's honest. Well, Pete was honest, all right. Well, the way you said that, I bet you liked him the best. Well, I'm crazy about Pete. He asked me to marry him. <laughs> is that true, Lizzie? Well, he did, and what'd you say? Well, I told him I would, as soon as he graduates from grammar school. Oh, grammar school? Is he that dumb? No. He's only nine years old. Pop, let's not eat around the bush. I know why you sent me to Sweet River. Because Uncle Ned's got six boys. Three of them are old enough to get married, and so am I. And I'm sorry you went to all that expense. The railroad ticket, all those new clothes. The trip didn't work. Noah, you can ride it in the books and ready. Well, Lizzie, what happened to Sweet River? Nothing. Not a doggone thing. What'd you do? Where'd you go? In the first three or four days I was there, I stayed in my room most of the time. What'd you do that for? Because I was embarrassed. Embarrassed about what? No, like you should pay it. I knew what I was there for. My whole family knew it too. I couldn't stand the way they were looking me over. So I'd go downstairs for my meals and rush right back to my room. I packed, I unpacked, 
washed my hair a dozen times. I read the Sears Roll book catalog from cover to cover. Finally, I said to myself, let's curse snap out of this. It was a Saturday night. They were all going to a rodeo dance. So I got myself all decked out in high steels and my lowest cut dress and walked down to that supper table. And all these boys looked at me as if I was stark naked. And then for the longest while, there wasn't a sound at the table except for Uncle Ned slept in his seat. Then suddenly, like a gunshot, I heard Ned Jr. say, Lizzie, how much do you weigh? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say to that? Well, that wasn't very smart of you, Lizzie. He was just trying to open the conversation. Well, I guess I closed it. Then, about ten minutes later, little Pete came hurrying into the supper table and he was carrying a geography book. And he said, hey, Pop, where's Madagascar? Well, everybody ventured an opinion and they were all dead <laughs> wrong. Suddenly, I felt I had to make a good impression and I said, it's an island in the Indian Ocean off the coast of Africa, right opposite Mozambique. Can I help it if I was good in geography? <laughs> so, what happened? Everything was so quiet, it sounded like the end of the world. Then I heard Ned Jr.'s voice, Lizzie, you fixing to be a school marm? Oh, no. Yes. Suddenly I felt like I was way back at the high school dance and nobody dancing with me. And I had a sick feeling I was wearing eyeglasses again the way I used to. So I knew from that minute on it was a no-go. I didn't go to the rodeo dance with them. Stayed home made up poems about what was on sale at Sears Roebuck's. So just you and Little Pete? Yes. On the day I left Sweet River, Little Pete was bawling, and he said, you're the beautifulest girl that ever was. Why, it's right. You are. Oh, Pop, please. Lizzie, we see you that way. He saw you that way. But not as big brothers. That's because you didn't show yourself right. I tried, Pop. I tried. No, you didn't. You hid behind your books. You hid behind those eyeglasses you don't even wear anymore. Why are you afraid of being beautiful? I'm afraid to think I am when I know I'm not. Um, Lizzie? Yes? Well, uh, me and the boys put our heads together, and it's something we'd like to mention to you. What? You about to tell her, Noah? Nope. It's your idea, Pop. Well, the, the boys and me, we figured after we get some work done here, well, we figured we'd tell uh, Right in the three-point this afternoon. Well? Well, we're going to go to the sheriff's office and uh, and visit the deputy. File? Yes, file. Pop, that's the craziest idea. But look, all I'm going to do is invite him over for supper, that's all. Well, if you do, I won't be here. Well, Lizzie, now I've got a right to invite a fellow to my own home for supper, don't I? I don't want you to go out last, so a husband for me. Oh, Lizzie, I wouldn't even think of doing something like that. I, I won't even mention your name. We'll start talking about a poker game, and before you know it, we'll get around to supper, and before you know that, he'll be sitting right there in that chair. No. Lizzie, where's it going, no matter what? Well, now, hold on, Pops. I'm against this. Lizzie says go down and talk to file while I'll go right along with you. Just one thing. We won't do it if Lizzie says no. And that's what I say. No. Oh, don't you listen to Noah. Every time you and Jimmy have to scratch your back, you turn and you ask Noah. Because he's the only sensible one around here, Pop. The three of us, we get carried away. Then get carried away. For once in your life, get carried away. It won't hurt you one bit. Not one bit. That's the dumbest idea I ever heard. Well, what's so dumb about it? It's a matter of pride. Pride. Oh, is that why you say no, Lizzie? Pride? Pop, if you want to invite somebody to supper, go right ahead, but not file. He doesn't even know I'm on earth. Oh, <laughs> he knows, Lizzie. He knows. No, he doesn't. Whenever we ride into town, Pop's got a great big hello for you and Noah and Jim, but he's got nothing for me. He just barely snakes his hat off his head, and that's all. He makes a point of ignoring me. Lizzie, when a man makes a point of ignoring you, he ain't ignoring you at all. Now. How about a file for supper? No. I don't like him. No, no. Lizzie, if you really don't like him, one no is quite enough. And just say it quiet. All right. Don't like him. I don't like the way he tucks his thumbs in his belt and I don't like the way he always seems to be thinking deep thoughts. Well, I thought you liked people that thought deep thoughts. Not file. Lizzie. You know, 
know, when you were a little kid, if I ever thought you were lying to me, I would just say honest and truth, and then I knew you weren't lying. So I'm asking you now, you really don't like file? Honest and truth? Pop, that's silly. I ask you a question, Lizzie. Honest and truth? Pop, that's a silly childish game, and all you'll get is silly childish answers. Now I refuse. Simply refuse to. Oh, for God's sake, go on in and buy this. Okay, come on, boys, let's go. Lizzie, you stay here and cook a great supper. File. Will you listen to me, File? Sheriff. Sheriff, when I was dead broke, you lent me some money. You remember that? When I needed a job, you made me your deputy. Hell, when I catch cold, you'd bring me a little mustard plaster. And now you want to give me a dog, and I do not want a dog. I won't charge you for it, File. You never <laughs> charge me for anything. I just don't want a dog. How do you know you don't want a dog until you see him? Well, I've seen dogs before. Not this one. He's different. I tell you, Bob, you see this little fella, you'll reach out and want to hug him to death. They are will, huh? Yes, you will. He's real loving. You'll be sitting there in your bare feet, and he'll come over and lick your big toe. <laughs> and pretty soon, there he is fast asleep, right across your feet. How about it, Bob? Well, that sounds real homey, but I'll do without. <laughs> Bob, you make me disgusted. It's not right for you to shack up here by yourself with a coffee pot and a leather sofa, especially once you've been married. When you lose a wife, the nights get damn cold. You need something warm up against your backside. Well, last night was 104 degrees. <laughs> All right. If you don't want the dog, if you're the kind of fella that don't like animals. I like animals, Sheriff. If you liked animals, you'd have animals. I've had them. I'll bet. What kind? Well, back in Pedleyville, I went out and got me a raccoon. A raccoon ain't a dog. <laughs> no, I guess it ain't, but I liked him. He was a crazy little fella, and he made me laugh. Yeah, what happened to him? Oh, I don't know. Took to the woods one day and never came back. Old bastard. <laughs> there, see? Now, can you figure a dog doing that? No, sir. I tell you, Pile, if you've never had a dog... I had a dog. When did you have a dog? When I was a kid. What kind of dog was it? Mongrel, just a kid's kind. What was his name? Dog. <laughs> you didn't have no other name for him? Dog, Sheriff, that was his name. That ain't no fitting name for a dog. I don't see why not. You don't see why not? Nope, I always came when I called him. Hell, man. You must not have liked him very much if you didn't even give him a name. Well, I liked him a lot, Sheriff. In fact, I, I took good care of him, too, and better, better than he took care of himself. Why, what happened to him? Well, one day he ran out under a buckboard. Well, hell. Do you think everything's going to run away or get run over? I don't know. I just don't want a dog, Sheriff. Not that I ain't obliged. Stubborn as a mule. Well... I guess I'll go out and have a look around, see what's doing. Yeah. Sleeps on your feet, does he? Right on my feet. Right on my big old stinking feet. <laughs> see you later, pal. Yeah.
Hey, AC. Hey, Files. Hey, hey, boys. Files. Hey, Files. Uh, riding over, you boys seeing sun and rain? Not a spit. Oh, no. What's it like in Sweet River? How we know? We ain't been to Sweet River. Sheriff says Lizzie's been to Sweet River. Well, yeah. What's it like? Dry. How'd Lizzie like it in Sweet River? Fine. She liked it fine. Yeah, she liked it fine. It was a... Uh, three bar dances, a rodeo, a summer fair, and all like all over the place. <laughs> um, uh, 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 how's your poker file? Yeah. My what? Poker. No, I don't like poker much. Huh. You don't? Don't you like spit in the ocean? Not much. Well, we figured we'd just ask you to play some cards. Yeah. Well, I gave up cards a long time ago, AC. Oh. Well, you did, huh? Sure did. Say five. What's that hanging down from your shirt? Well, it kind of looks like a needle. <laughs> sure is. What's the matter? Your shirt tore? Looks like it. And you fix it yourself, do you? Sure do. Now, I wouldn't say that now, Jim. I've been mending my own shirts ever since I became a widower back in Pedleyville. Well, yeah, Lizzie fixes all my shirts. Must be nice to have a sister. Or something. <laughs> Did, uh... <clears throat> did uh, Lizzie come back from Sweet River by herself, did she? Sure, she went by herself, didn't she? Well, now, that don't mean nothing. I rode down to Leverston to buy myself a mare. I went by myself, but I came back with a mare. Well, she didn't go to buy nothing, File. Get it? Nothing. Don't get ornery, Jim. I just asked a friendly question. Yeah, it's just a friendly question, Jim. Don't get ornery. I, I know. I keep saying to Jim, the reason you ain't got no friends is you're just plain ornery. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to make friends. Sure, I do. I do. No, you don't. Do you ever ask a fellow out for a drink? No. Do you ever say to a fellow, come on over for supper? No. I, well, I guess you're right. I'm sorry, File. I didn't mean to get ornery. Why don't you come on out and have a drink? Uh, supper. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on over and have some supper with us. Well, I guess I'll say no to the supper, boys, but uh, I'll be glad to go out and have a drink with you. Well, um... We don't have time for a drink, but uh, we've been aiming to ask you to supper one of these days. Yep. Well, I'll be glad to come one of these days. Oh, well, uh, how about tonight? Yeah. I don't have time tonight. Uh, seems there's some kind of outlaw riding our way. Oh. A fellow by the name of Tornado Johnson. Have to stick around. I don't suppose he's headed this way, do you? They say he's three-point bound. Hmm. But you don't know he'll be here tonight. Hmm. Well, I don't know he won't be here tonight. <laughs> Well, he might be at Pedleyville, or yeah. he might be at Peaks Junction. Well, hell, he might be over at our place. Yeah. <laughs> well, I won't be at your place, Jim. <laughs> well, you said for me to be friendly. I'm trying to be friendly, but he don't want to be friendly. I, I want to be friendly, Jim. I just, I don't want to be married. Who says we're inviting you over for Lizzie? You take that back. Don't take nothing back, Jim. Well, then you take something else. If I didn't think you had that coming, I'd walk the floor with you. He had it coming. I guess we all did. Come on, turtle head, let's go home. <laughs> I shouldn't even get an HC. Oh, that's all right, File, but... Well, the thing is, I mean, you know you lost that fight. Say what? Well, it wouldn't have hurt you to come for supper. It might have done you some good. We weren't talking about supper. That's right. We were talking about Lizzie. She might have done you some good, too. I give me my own shirts. Oh, yeah? Well, it seems to me you need a lot more mending than shirts, File. Now, wait a minute, H.C. You don't drop a word like that and just leave it. All right, what'd you hit him for? He threw a punch. I got angry. Angry? Why? We come around here and tell you that we like enough to have in our family? Is that an insult? I, I don't like people interfering. Interfering with what? I'm doing all right by myself. Oh, no, you ain't doing all right by yourself. A fellow who won't make friends with this town that likes him and looks up to him, who keeps himself all locked up inside, why, he ain't doing all right, and if he says so, he's a damn liar. Take it easy, H.C. No, a liar, and I mean it. Now, you call yourself a widower. Well, now, we all got respect for your feelings, file.
widower. You know, and this whole town knows you ain't no widower. I am a widower. My wife died six years ago back in Pedley. Oh, file. Your wife didn't die. She ran out on you. And you are a divorced man. Now, we can all go on and treat you like a widower if you like. I mean, hell, don't hurt us not. But you, a fellow who just locks himself inside, why, he needs men. Oh, you want to throw any more punches? Tell him no exact time. Well, that's real smart. Suppose it comes at seven and all the cooking goes dry. Oh, I got the prettiest lemon cake in the oven and steak and kidney pie as big as that table. Oh. Oh. Look at me. I better change my dress so I'll make that look in a mess. Uh, Lizzie. Answer the telephone, will you, Nola? Don't let Jimmy near the table. I'll mess it up. Jimmy, who's this? Nicky McGuire. Hot dog. What exactly do you mean, hot dog? Well, just hot dog, Noah. Uh, what are you going to say to her? Oh, I don't know what she's going to say to me. Well, watch out. Well, hello. Hello, Snooky. Oh, I'm just fine and dandy, and you are? Uh, fine and dandy? Well, I'm glad you're fine and dandy, too. Fine and dandy, my big foot. Well, I was going to telephone you, Snooky, but you telephoned me. Well, ain't that the prettiest coincidence? Oh, Jimmy, for Pete's sake. <laughs> what? You mean it? Oh, you mean it, Snooky? Well, gee, I sure hope you mean it. What's all that you mean it about? She's saying, it's a hot night, and the Essex is saying, chug, chug, where's little Jimmy? You tell her, chug, chug, little Jimmy's going to sit at home on his little fat bottle. Well, now you wait a minute, Noah. Don't say wait a minute. Now you want to go get yourself mixed up with poison, you go right ahead, but I'll wash my hands up. Oh, hello, Snooky. I just can't tonight. Uh, I don't know why exactly. I can't talk right now. Oh, Snooky. You still got that little red out of yours? Well, that's fine, Snooky. You take care of that. All right, goodbye, Snooky. There, you see, you go out with her once and she starts chasing. Well, I don't see what's wrong with that, Noah. Oh, you don't, huh? Well, no. If people want to get together, they ought to get together. It don't matter how, does it? Uh, you ask yourself, it don't matter, Jimmy. Go ahead and ask yourself. Maybe it does. Holy mackerel, I sure wish I could figure things out. If only I could get something on this little radio. Well, you think I could get Kansas City on this thing? Nope. Yeah? Well, maybe I got it and I just don't know it. Because the other day I was fiddling with this little radio and suddenly I hear it sound like the prettiest music. Uh, I says to myself, well, son of a gun, I've got Kansas City. Oh, static, that's all. It's just static. Well, I knew you'd say something like that, Noah. But I figured the answer to it. If it feels like Kansas City, it is Kansas City. Why don't you make it feel like Africa? On this little radio? <laughs> Where's Lizzie? Did you tell her? No, she went upstairs to get dressed. <clears throat> well, folks, how do I look? Beautiful. Great. Beautiful. You know, Pop, I really think I am. If you don't look too close. <laughs> when do you suppose Pop will get here? I don't know, sometime we can start eating. Yeah, we can start anytime, Lizzie. Anytime? Mm -hmm. Will you 
better wash up and we can have more room at the table. And... File's not coming. No. I see. It's not that he didn't want to. No, no. Yeah, he wanted to. A, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. He did, huh? Uh, yeah, sure. When Pop said, come on over for supper, File. Well, did you notice how his face kind of lighted up a little? Did you notice that? Yeah, yeah. And then Pop said, sure. Sure, I'll come over. I'll be glad to come. Well, but then he suddenly remembered something. What did he remember, Jimmy? Well, he remembered there's some kind of outlaw running around, and he best stick around and pay attention to his job. Yes, sir, you know, business before pleasure. File sure was real friendly. Friendly, huh? <laughs> what happened to your rod? Uh, it, it kind of swole up on me. Uh, file hit him. You mean you fought to get him to come here? It was only a little fight, Lizzie. Well, why don't you make it a big one? A riot? Why don't you all just pile on and slug it? Well, Lizzie, you're seeing this all wrong. I'm seeing it the way it happened. I said she might be a pretty good cook and it might be a good supper, mm -hmm. but she's plain. She's a Plain as old shoes. Oh, he didn't say anything like that. Well, yeah, he didn't say nothing about shoes. Lizzie, I I'm afraid we, we messed it up. Uh, if you'd have taken my advice, there wouldn't have been a mess. I said, don't go down and talk to fire. Nobody listen. I said, don't send her off to Sweet River. Nobody listen. Uh, I mean, hell, I don't like to be around all the time, but for Pete's sake. Oh, no, I'm stumped. Now, if you were Lizzie's father, what would you do? Who's to say we're going to do anything? We've been trying to push her off and get her married. What if she doesn't get, get married? Is that the end of everything? I mean, she's got a house. She's got a, a home. She's got family. She's got bed and board, clothes on her back, and plenty to eat. That's right. From now on, we listen to Noah. Oh, don't you dare listen to Noah. Why not? She's got everything that she needs. She ain't got the one thing that'll make her happy, Noah. Well, she's not going to get it. Because she's going at it all wrong. How, Jimmy? How am I going at it wrong? Well, you don't talk to a man the way you are. You, you talk too serious. And if there's anything that scares the hell out of a fellow, well, it's a serious talking girl. Well, that's just the way Lizzie is, and she can't be anything else, Jimmy. Well, yes, she can. She's just as smart as any of the ladies down at the social club. Well, why should you go down to the social club on Wednesday nights if she can go and flirt as good as any of you can? Well, what do you want her to turn into? Lily Ann Beasley? Hey, Lily Ann Beasley gets any man she goes for. <laughs> Why, one morning I saw her walk up to Phil Mackey and she waggled her hips like a cocker spaniel. She said, Phil Mackey, how many toes do you got? <laughs> well, he said, well, naturally, I got ten. Well, then she said, well, that's just the right amount of toes for a big, strong man to have. <laughs> yeah, pretty soon he was cooked. He started following her around, and she got him so nervous that he bust out with the shingles. Well, if she wants Phil Mackey, she can have him, shingles and all. And how about that livestock fellow from Chicago? Jimmy, can I treat a man the way she treated him? My polka dot pie. I just adore a man with a polka dot pie. Oh, the little round dots with pride to my heart. Yeah. And that poor fellow, the blood rushed out of his face. I, I thought he'd kill right over in that horse trough. I don't want a man to kill over. I want him to stand up straight. I want to stand up straight to him. I'm not having a trick him. Isn't that possible with a man? Isn't it possible? No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I mean, for once, Jimmy said something sensible in his life. Lizzie, if you want a man, you gotta get a man the way a man gets got. Well, if that's the way a man gets got, I don't want any of this. Uh, Lizzie. No. To hell with five. To hell with all of them. Oh, don't use that language. Oh, hell, hell, hell. To hell with all of them. <sighs> Who opened that door? I don't know. It must have been the wind. Wind? What? Did you say wind? <laughs> Why, there's not a breath of wind anywhere in the world. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Funny Starbucks. Starbucks, the name. Lady of the house. Hello. Hello. That's a mighty nice dress you've got on. You ought to go to a party. Don't you knock on the door before oh. you come in? Okay, mister. What is it? What can we do for you? Oh, you're asking the wrong question, mister. The question is, what can I do for you? 
I don't recall us asking anyone to do anything. Oh, you should have, mister. You sure should have. You need a lot of help. You got 12 steers down in the north range at 62 in the gully. The calves are starving, and the heifers are down on their knees. Well, you know a heck of a lot about our herd. And that sure is a shiner. Uh, your ranch, mister. Mm -hmm. yeah. He owns it. I'll run it. Yeah. Well, then I guess I'll talk to you. You got a little business about you, mister. You got your feet apart, you stand solid on the ground. That's the kind of man I like to talk to. Now, what are you gonna do about them cattle? You know what happened to our cattle, y'all know what killed them. Drought. You ever hear of it? Hear of it? That's all I hear about. Everywhere I go, there's drought ahead of me. But when I leave, behind me, there's rain. Rain! I think this man's crazy. Sure, that's what I am, crazy. I woke up this morning, I looked at the world, and I said to myself, the world's gone completely out of its mind. And the only way to set it straight is a grade A number one lunatic. <laughs> well, here I am, folks, crazy bedbug. Then I introduced myself, the name's Starbuck, Rainmaker. <laughs> I've heard about these Rainmakers. Yeah, I think I read about a Rainmaker once. It was, I think it was in Idaho. What'd you read, mister? I can't remember if they locked him up or ran him out of town. It might be they strung him up on a sycamore tree. The uh, point is, we don't believe in rainmakers. Well, what do you believe in, mister? Dying cattle? <laughs> you really mean you can bring the rain? He talks too fast, he can't bring anything. I asked him. Well, you mean it, you can bring rain? Rain is rain, brother. It's been done. Well, how? And where? How? Sodium chloride. Pick it up high, right up to the clouds. Electrify the warm front, neutralize the cold front, barometerize the tropopause, magnetize occlusions in the sky. In other words, bunk. Lady, you're right. You know why it sounds like bunk? Because it is bunk. Bunk mm -hmm. and hokey pokey, and I tell you, I'd be ashamed to use any of those methods. Well, what method do you use? My methods like my name. It's all my own. You want to hear my deal? We're not interested. What is it? Pop, you're not seriously listening to this man. Any charge for listening? No charge. Free. Go ahead. What's the deal? $100 in advance, and inside of 24 hours, you'll have rain. Y you mean it? Real rain? Rain is rain, brother. It's a wetness known as water. Aqua pure. Mammals drink it, fish swim in it, little boys wade in it, and birds flap their wings and sing like sunrise. Water. I remember it. Where'd you bring me in the hundred, Noah? Noah, don't be a trout. Me? Don't worry, I won't. Well, Noah, we got trout. Lizzie, it's rain. We need it. Well, we won't get a drop of it. Not from him. Okay, how would you do it, Starbuck? And yeah, don't ask me no questions. Why? Well, that's a fair question. How will you do it? Why do you care how I'll do it, sister, as long as it's done? But I'll tell you how I'll do it. I'll lift this stick up and take a long swipe at the sky and let down a shower of hailstones as big as cantaloupes. <laughs> or I'll shout some good old Nebraska cuss words and you'll turn around and there'll be a lake where your corral used to be. Or maybe I'll sing a little tune. It'll sound so sweet and sound so sad that you'll weep and your old man will weep and the sky will get all misty-like and shed the prettiest tears you ever did see. How I'll do it, girl, I'll just do it. Where'd you bring rain before? Yeah, what town, what state? Lady, last place I brought rain is now called Starbuck. They named it after me. Dry, I tell you. Those people did not have enough damp to blink their eyes. So I get out my big wheel and my rolling drum, my yellow hat with little feathers in it. I go out there, I look at the sky, and I go, Cumulus, Cumulonimbus, Nimbulocumulus. And then, pretty soon, there's a little cloud the size of a mare's tail. And then, over there, there's another one looking like a whitewashed chicken house. And pretty soon, there's a herd of white buffalo stampeding across the sky. And then, sister of all good people, down comes the rain. Rain in buckets, rain in barrels, filling the lowlands, flooding the gullies. And the land is as green as the Valley of Adam. And as I rode through that town, I look behind me, and I see the prettiest colors in the sky. Purple, blue, green, gold, colors to make you cry. And me, 
I'm riding right through that rainbow. <laughs> so, do we have a deal? Um, well, um... Bob, no! He's a liar and a con man. That's right, you're a liar and a con man. It hurts me to hear you say that, mister. Well, so long to you. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, come back here. You called me a con man. That's right. You're a liar and a con man, but I didn't say I wouldn't take your deal. Pop. Well, I didn't say I would either. Pop, you're not going to listen to this man. I mean, how, what would, would you give him a hundred bucks? How would I write that in the books? Oh, for heaven's sakes, no. I'll write it off as a gamble. Hell, I've lost more than that in a Saturday night poker game. You get an even chance in poker. Well, now, Lizzie, let me tell you something. I once knew a fellow who had the asthma real bad. And he coughed and he wheezed, and he went to every doctor there was. And still he coughed and he wheezed until one day, a liar and a con man came along, took the old fella for $50 and a gold-plated watch. But a funny thing happened after that. After the con man left, the old boy never coughed or wheezed one minute until he got kicked in the head by a horse. It's a crazy reason. I'll give you better reason, Lizzie girl. You gotta take my deal because for once in your life, you gotta take a chance on a con man. You gotta take my deal because there's dying calves that might pick up and live. Because a hundred bucks is just a hundred bucks. But rain in a dry season is a sight to behold. You gotta take my deal because it's gonna be a hot night. And the world goes crazy on a hot night. But maybe that's what a hot night is for. Starbuck, you've got yourself a deal. No, oh, I knew I had a deal the moment I walked into this place. <laughs> How'd you know that? Oh, I count four of you and five places set for supper. And I said to myself, Starbuck, your name's written right on that chair. <laughs> okay, let's eat, everybody. Folks, if you all act like she does, it's gonna make it mighty tough for me to do my job. Because when there's suspicion around, it's a dry season. I don't doubt it. Well, she don't believe in me. How about the rest of you? What do you mean believe in you? We sure don't. Well, then I 
I changed my mind. I don't want your money. Take it back. Uh, no, oh, please. Now, we made a bargain. It's settled. Just be a good sport. Be a good sport? What the hell do you expect me to say? I'll explain to you, Noah. Make it rain. It takes a lot of confidence. Oh, you have doubts about me. I get doubts about myself. I see. <laughs> if you don't bring the rain, you're going to blame it on us. Uh, we didn't have confidence. Uh, well, we don't. <laughs> steal our money. That's all you can steal. Well, that's not the right attitude. I got the right attitude. Take back your dough, Starbuck. No. What if I need some help? Well, I'll help you and so will Paul. But he won't. What kind of help? Nothing you can't do. How about you, lady? Any confidence? No confidence. We don't need her at Starbuck. Here, take your dough. Now tell us the first step. Well, what I'm going to ask you to do, it's not going to make sense. But what's sensible about a flood or a hurricane? Nothing. Right. Now, look out there. That wagon of mine, I got me a, a big bass drum. Somebody's got to beat that drum. <laughs> beat it? What the hell for? Now, don't ask no questions. Well, don't get sensible. That's right, Jim. Now, <laughs> who's going to beat that drum? Well, me. I'll beat it. Oh, uh, Jim, you're going to be my first lieutenant. Now, you go out there, and every time you get a feeling for it, <coughs> beat that drum three times. Boom, boom, boom. Low, like thunder. You got it? I got it. Every time I get the feeling? That's right. Well, when do I start? Mister, you've already started. <laughs> now, Mr. H, you <laughs> close attention. In that wagon of mine, I got me a bucket of white paint. Now, it ain't ordinary white paint. It's special. It's electromagnetized, oxygenated, dechromated white. I want you to go out there and paint a big white arrow pointing away from the house. And so don't get struck by light. Well, that sounds reasonable. Now, it's a shame you don't got a mule on the place. We got a meal. Yeah, we got, we got a meal. Oh, you? That's great. Just then. No. I want you to go out there, take a length of strong rope, and tie that mule's hind legs together. What? Tie the hind legs of the mule? What for? Please, now. Please. You gotta do as I ask you to. I ain't gonna do it. Oh, no. Come on, for heaven's sake. Just do what you say. Damn. Tie the hind legs of a mule. Pop, wait a minute. Look. Oh, I'm ashamed of being sitting over here, keeping my mouth shut. I wonder how far I'll let this man go and make him fool out of me. Well, he can't make me a bigger fool than I make out of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your common sense. Hang on to a little of it. Oh, I did. You mean just go along this fellow halfway. No, I can't do that. No, 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 no. I can't do that. I've got to take a chance on him. A full chance. Without the fear of getting cheated <laughs> or getting hurt. Get the lamp there, as far as he'll take A white arrow, did you say? A white arrow, H.C. I'll pay him. Oh, damn it, mister. You're going to get your money back. Oh, it's the last thing I do. Oh, now, don't get nervous. I'll be going to get you nervous. No, I'm not. Not a hit it. Ah, that's all right.
Daisy, can I ask you a question? No. I'll ask it anyway. <laughs> Why are you fussing at the buttons in your dress? I'm fussing? I'm not. Let him alone. I'll play him fine. As tight as I'll ever get. And it's a nice dress, too. You expecting somebody? None of your business. A woman gets all decked out. She must be expecting a moment. Where is he? It's getting kind of late. Oh, I see. You were, but now you ain't. Stand you up. Start up, give up. More go. Wait a second. Let go of me. Listen, wait a second. The question I wanted to ask you before didn't have nothing to do with buttons. It's this. When I first walked in here, you didn't like me. Why? Seth, let go. You didn't like me. Why'd you go up on your hind legs like a frightened man? Mr. Starbuck, you paraded yourself in here and you took over everything. I don't like to be taken by a con man. Now, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of you queering my work and taking me out of my name. I called you what you are. Big bad liar and a fake. How do you know I'm a fake? How do you know I'm a liar? Maybe I can bring ring. Maybe when I was born, God whispered a little word in my ear. Maybe he said, Bill Starbuck, you ain't gonna have much in this world. You ain't gonna have no wife and no kids, no green little house to come home to. But Bill Starbuck, wherever you go, you'll bring pain. Maybe that's my one and only blessing. There's no such blessing in the world. Oh, I've seen better blessings, busy girl. I got me a brother who's got You don't have to tell him where you ache or where you pain. He just comes in, lays his hand on your heart, and pretty soon you're breathing sweet again. And I got me another brother who can sing. And when he sings, that song is there, and it never leaves you. Why, I used to think, why? Well, why ain't I talented like Fred or Arnie? Why am I just a nothing man with nothing in my name? <coughs> but then one day, the drop comes, and Fred can't heal it away, and Arnie can't sing it away. For me? Oh, I go down there, and I, I look up and go, Rain, damn it, please bring rain. And the rain came. And I knew I was part of the family. That's a story. You don't have to believe it if you don't want to. I don't believe it. You're just like Noah. You don't believe in anything. That's not true. Oh, yes, it is. You put the dress on and the bow don't come. So you're afraid nothing will ever come. You got no faith. I've got as much as anyone. You don't even know what faith is. And I'll tell you, it's believing you see white when your eyes tell you it's black. It's knowing with your heart. I know, you're a fake. I'm sad about you, Lizzie. You don't believe in nothing. Not even in yourself. And you don't even believe you're a woman. And if you don't, you're not. said that Tornado Johnson fellow was seen riding our way. Oh, and old lady Keeley called and said she heard thunder. How can she? She's deaf as a post. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard it too, but it was too regular. There it is. Sure ain't thunder. A lot of electricity in there. My hair's full of it. Mine too. Bill Mackey said the Curry Boys came by. Oh, yes, I forgot. And he said Jim Curry came out of here wearing a black eye. He did, huh? And he weren't wearing it when he came in. What happened? Would you tell Phil Mackey to mind his own damn business? And me to mind mine? 
Sorry, Sheriff. Sorry. Sheriff, I've been thinking. I changed my mind. About what? That dog you were talking about. You did, huh? Yes, and if the offer still holds, I'd sure like to have him. Well, I'll tell you, Pyle. When you said you didn't want him, and little Bobby Easterfell come over, and my wife gave him away. I'm sorry, Pyle. Forget it. Forget it. What made you change your mind about the dog? Oh, I don't know. Didn't have anything to do with the curries, did it? Now, what would my wanting a dog have to do with the curries, for God's sake? Didn't it? All right, it did. File, why don't you stop teasing yourself? If you want to get yourself out of this stew, why don't you do it? Why don't you go over and see the curry girl? No, I don't want to be a dunce with a woman, not again. Just because you're a dunce with one of them, do you have to be a dunce with all of them? I don't want to go over there and see her and just stand there like a stick. Don't stand. Sit down. Talk. I make up conversations. They all stay in my head. Well, flush them out. Do you mind if I take an hour off? Take two hours. <laughs> take the whole night. No. No one hour is all I can stand. so sure about that, Noah? You wouldn't, I would. I think he is going to bring the rain. Because I've been out there looking in his wagon and boy, he's got all kinds of things like wheels and flags and a, and a bugle and fireworks and everything, and everything that a con man would have and nothing they got to do with things with the rain. Well, you're wrong about that, Noah. Wait a minute, Jimmy. What are you doing to Lizzie's linen chef? Oh, he asked me if he could spend the night in the tack room and I said yes, so figured I'd get him something to sleep on. <laughs> going out of your way to make him cozy, ain't you? Why not? I like it. Fighting against me, too. He certainly pulling the wool over your eyes. Uh, you know, I'm out there with the drum waiting for the feeling to come, and he comes up, and we have a great talk, the two of us. 
Well, what did he try to sell you this time? Well, nothing. He didn't try to sell me nothing. He just come over and I'm standing there looking at the sky and he says to me, what do you think about Jim? Real serious, like he gives a damn. Well, why don't you tell him? I said not much. Now that's a good start to a conversation. Well, and then before you know it, I'm telling him everything about myself. Uh, I'm telling him all about Lizzie and about how Noah snores at night. Well, heck, I even told him about Snooky. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I said, what do you think of a girl that wears loud clothes and puts on red lip rouge and always goes around in a little red hat? Is she fast? You know what he said? Well, he said, never judge a heifer by the flick of her tail. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think so. <laughs> and then he says, what do you think of the world, Jim? Well, I say to him, it's going to get all swollen up and bust right in our faces. But you know what he said to me? He said, it's happened before and it can happen again. Uh, there, I told you to try to sell you a bill of goods. Well, no, well, I understand that crack. You mean he was trying to make me feel smart because I ain't? Oh, shut up. Well, no, I won't shut up. Now, what the hell's gotten into you? You know, I just thought of something, Noah. You know the only time I feel real dumb? Now, when's that? It's when I'm talking to you. Now, why the hell is that, Noah? Uh, uh, Lizzie, I thought you were still in bed. It's roasting up there. You know, it's too bad we ain't got one of them electric fans. Yeah. No, it's not only the heat. Jimmy and his drum. <laughs> No, thanks. Lizzie, uh, another 
was hinting that I made some kind of a mistake with you. Did I? Of course not. I'm perfect. Everybody knows I'm perfect. Very nice girl. Brought mine. Good housekeeper. Very honest. So damn honest it kills me. How about a sandwich? Uh, no, thanks. You gotta get a man like a man has got. That's a no stand. Wasn't it stupid? Why, it's not even good English. Oh, Lizzie, don't even think about it. Think about it? Why, I won't give a second thought. Pop. What, Lizzie? Do you know what that Starbucks man said to me? What? No. Why repeat? A man like that? You go repeating what people like that have to say. Why doesn't it rain? What we need is a flood. A great big flood. End of the world, ta-ta, goodbye. <laughs> Pop, you don't want to take lessons in being a woman. Lizzie, you don't have to take lessons. You are one. Starbuck says I'm not. Well, if Starbuck don't see the woman in you, he's just plain blind. It's filed blind. Are they all blind? Pop, I'm sick and tired of me. I want to get out of me for a while and be somebody else. Well, then, why don't you go down to that social club and be Lily Ann Beasley? Is that what you'd like to be? Lily Ann Beasley knows how to get along. Well, then you better call her on the telephone and ask if you can join up. I will. You see if I don't. I'm going to buy myself a lot of new dresses to lay down here, and I'll get myself some bright little version. Paint my mouth so it looks like I'm always whistling. Fine. Go ahead and look just like some silly little jackass. Don't be me looking. Somebody else. Oh, Lizzie, you can't be any other way. Good and I. Good and I. You think it's hard? It's easy. Watch me. It's easy. Look at this. <laughs> wow, Phil Mac. How good and good looking you are. Such curly blonde hair. Such curly white teeth. And I count your teeth. <laughs> now, now, must have bought. Oh, those muscly muscles. Just hard as stone. That's what they are. Hard as stone. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Don't take a little This is going to roll right over and see I die. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs>
I, I guess they both knew I was lying. Lying about what? Well, I didn't come around to apologize to Jim. What did you come for, Pa? To get something off my chest. See, this afternoon your father, he had, well, there's a wrong impression going on in town that I'm a widower, and I'm not. I know that, Bob. Well, I, I know you know it, but I gotta say it. I'm a divorced man. You don't have to talk about uh, it. Yes, I do. I came to tell the truth. I've been denying I'm a divorced man, and well, now I admit it. That's all I want to say, and, and that squares me away with everybody. Does it? Yes, it does. And from now on, if I want to live alone, all by myself, well, it's, it's nobody's business but my own. Wait a minute. How do you figure that, Lizzie? Because you owe something to people. I don't owe anything to anybody. Yes, you do. For what? I don't know. Friendship? Somebody holds his hand out to him. You gotta reach and take it. What do you mean I've got to? I've got to. There are too many people alone. You're lucky enough for somebody to want you for friend. It's an obligation. This ain't something the two of us can settle just by talking. No, it isn't. It'll take some time. Yes. Oh, you're here, Father. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'm here. <laughs> I, I was just coming in for my uh, feed book. Around like a dumb little flirt. Silk ties, straight. 
strong white teeth. What do you take me for? What do you take yourself for? I was trying to. Hey, don't be so damn ridiculous. Just be yourself. What, what happened, Lizzie? What did he do? Run out on you? I never seen a man run out of here so fast. Where do you go? Oh my God, were you watching the show? I was thinking of laying two slides. Well, what did he say? Yeah. What did you say? I didn't think anything. Not one sensible thing. I couldn't even talk to him. But you were talking. No, I was sashaying around like Lily Ann Beasley. I was making a fool of myself. Where can I ever talk to anybody? Oh, Lizzie, don't blame yourself. It wasn't your fault. No, it wasn't her fault. It wasn't Pa's fault. And you know damn well whose fault it was. Oh, oh, you mean it was my fault, no, is that right? You bet it was yours. No, Pa. Not, well, he's got to explain that. Well, I'll explain it all right. You've been building up this rosy dream for her, and she's got no right to hope for it. She's got a right to hope for anything, uh, though. No, she doesn't. Uh, we, she's got to face the facts, and you've got to help her face them. Stop telling her lies. I never told her a lie in my life. Oh, you told her nothing but lies. Uh, she's the smartest girl in the world. She's beautiful. Yeah. And that's the worst lie of all. Because you know she's not beautiful. She's plain. Well, no way you can wait that. You go right along with him. But you better listen to me, Lily. Lizzie. I'm the only one who loves her enough to, to tell you the truth. You're playing. Damn it, Noah. Quit oh, it. Don't look at yourself in the mirror. You're playing. Noah! Daddy, take it. Let me stop. Let me go, Starbucks. Let me go. Stop it, you damn fool. Let go. Get out. Yeah, sure. I'll get out. I'll get out and I'll never come back. Next time. That kid goes at me, Hal. Next time he goes at you, I'll make sure he has fighting lessons. Look, you clear out of here. No, I won't clear out. And while I'm here, you're going to quit calling that kid a dumbbell. Because he's not. He can take a lousy little hickory stick and see the magic in it. But you wouldn't know that. Because it's not in your books. I said clear out of here. And while I'm here, you're not going to call her plain. Because you don't know what's plain and what's beautiful. Starbuck, this is family. It's not your fight. Oh, yes, it is. I've been fighting guys like you all my life. And I always lose. But this time, by God, this time. Jimmy! Sorry I slept, Jimmy, and I'll tell him so. But I ain't sorry for a damn thing I said to her. No, that's enough! No, it's not enough. Now listen, Lizzie, you better listen to what I said. No one's gonna come riding up here on a white horse. No one's gonna come in here and snatch you up in his arms and marry you. You're gonna be an old maid. And the sooner you realize that, Sooner you'll stop breaking your heart. Oh, man. Oh, Lizzie, forget it. Forget everything you said. Oh, Bob, he's right. I've known him a long time, but this is so bad to put him to. Oh, man. Lizzie. Bob, you've been lying to me, and I've been lying to myself.
has came out to thank you for what you said to Noah. I meant every word. And what you said about Jim, I'm sure you meant that. What I said about you? I don't believe you. Lizzie, what are you scared of? You. I don't trust you. What don't you trust about me? Well, everything. The way you talk, the way you brag, or even your name. What's wrong with my name? Well, it sounds fake, like you made it up. You're darn right I did. There, of course. And why not? You know what name I was born with? Smith. Smith, for the love of Mike, Smith. What kind of handle is that for a guy like me? I need something with the whole sky and the power of a man. Star Buck. Now that's a name. And it's mine. No, it's not. You were born Smith. That's your name. You're wrong, Lizzie. The name you give yourself is one you're only one you were born with. If I were you, I should choose another name than Lizzie. Well, thank you. I'm very pleased with it. Oh, no, you're not. You ain't pleased with anything but yourself. I'm sure you ain't pleased with Lizzie. I don't ask you to be pleased with it, Starbuck. I am. Lizzie, but why don't stand for nothing? That stands for me. Me. I'm not the Queen of Sheba. I'm not Lady Godiva. I'm not Cinderella at the ball. Would you like to be? Starbuck, you're ridiculous. What's ridiculous about it? Dream you're somebody. Be somebody. But Lizzie, that's nobody. So many millions of wonderful women with wonderful names. Leonora, Desdemona, Carolina, Florendina, Christina, Diane. Lizzie. Good night, Starbuck. Wait, wait, one second. I got a perfect name for just listen. Melisande. I don't like it. Well, that's because you don't know anything about her. But when I tell you who she was, later when I tell you who she was. Who? She was the most beautiful. She was the beautiful wife of King Hamlet. Ever heard of him? Go on, go on. He was a fellow who sailed across the ocean and brought back the Golden Fleece. And you know why he did that? Because Queen Melisande begged him for it. Miss Melisande, oh, she was so beautiful, and her hair was so long and curly. Every time he looked at her, he just fell right down and died. And this kid, Hamlet, he'd do anything for her, anything she wanted. So when she said, Hamlet, I got a terrible hanker for a soft golden fleece, he just naturally sailed right off to find it. And when he came back, all bleeding and torn, he laid that fleece of gold right on her pretty white feet. And she took that fur piece and wrapped it around her pretty pink shoulders. And she said, I got the golden fleece, and I'll never be cold no more. Melisande, what a woman, what a name. Starbuck, you silly jackass. Take a lot of different stories that I've read in a hundred different places and roll them up into one big, fat, ridiculous lie. I wasn't lying. I was dreaming. Well, it's the same thing. If you think it's the same thing, I take it back about your name. Lizzie, I think it suits you fine. I know another name that would suit you. Noah, it's you and your brother. You got no dream. You think all dreams have to be your own kind? Hold a fleece of thunder on a mountain? There are other dreams, Mr. Starbuck. Little quiet ones that come to a woman when she's shot in the silverware and put moth flakes in the closet. Like what? Like a man's voice saying, Lizzie, it's my blue suit pressed. And the same man saying, scratch between my shoulder blades. And the kids laughing and teasing and setting up a racket. And how it feels to say the word husband. And there are all kinds of dreams, Mr. Starbuck. Mine are small, like my name, Lizzie, but they're real like my name, real. So you can have yours and I'll have mine. Lizzie. Please. I'm sorry, Lizzie. I'm sorry. No, Brian, let me go. It's okay. I hope your dreams come true, Lizzie. I hope they do. They won't. They never will. Make them happen, Lizzie. But you've got to believe in yourself. How can I when nobody else will? You've got to believe it first. Hey, let me ask you, Lizzie. Are you pretty? No, I'm plain. There. 
You don't know you're a woman. I am a woman. A plain one. There's no such thing. Every woman is pretty. They're pretty in different ways, but they're all pretty. Not me. When I look in the looking glass. Don't let Noah be your looking glass. It's going to be inside you first. And then one day it'll be the man who loves you. It'll be his eyes, maybe. And you'll look in that mirror and you'll be more than pretty. You'll be beautiful. It'll never happen. Make it happen, Lizzie. Why don't you think pretty take down your hair? No. Now close your eyes, Lizzie. Go on, close. Now say, I'm pretty. I'm... I can't. Say it, Lizzie. I'm pretty. Say it again. Pretty. Say it. Mean it. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Why did you do that? Because when you said you were pretty, it was true. Lizzie. Lizzie, stop crying and look at me. Yeah. Stop crying and look at me. Tell me what you see. Look at my eyes. I can't believe what I see. Tell me what you see. Oh. Is it me? Is it really me?
And then, then without Noah being there, all by my smart little self, I said, whoa. <laughs> yippee, yippee, yippee. <laughs> well, thanks, Bob. Your yippee is appreciated. Well, I don't believe a word of it. Why'd she give you the hat? Well, for the same reason I gave her my elves to. Oh. We're engaged. That's right. right. She did trap me. Oh, well, now, Noah. I see I'm going to have to give you this Avada Panatella. Oh, Jimmy, don't listen to him. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Thank you kindly. Oh, I got to tell Lizzie. Where is Lizzie? Where the hell do you think she is? She's asleep. Well, then I'll go wake her up. Not no, wait, Jimmy. She's not up there. Where is she? Yeah, where is she, Pop? Well, uh, she's out in the tackle. You mean at Starbuck? Yes. <laughs> Boy, that's great. I got another cigar for Lizzie. <laughs> you just let her walk in on that fellow when he's sleeping. We didn't even try to stop her. No, I did. You called her an old maid. Well, you took away the one last little bit of hope that she had. Well, after you left and she picked up those bed linens and went out, I didn't even ask where she was going. I was just glad that she went. Because if she lost all hope in here, well, maybe she can find it out there. That was in your mind the minute you laid eyes on that felt, wasn't it? Well, you put an awful cut and dry. It's, it's truth. So what of it? Well, I think it's great them being out there together. Well, maybe they'll get all serious about each other. Before you know it, I got me a new brother. Well, boy, I'd trade him for you any day. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have to trade him for anybody, because he's not the marrying kind, not that fellow. Oh, well, I bet he is the marrying kind. Well, I bet he is. Well, hey, Pop, what do you figure Raymaker rates? Oh, no, let's not be beforehand, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, oh come in, H.C. Hey, Bob. Hey, Sheriff, uh, sir. Sheriff. It's uh, kind of late to be visiting, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we're not exactly visiting, H.C. How's, uh, how's Lizzie? sheriff can call on Lizzie. No, we no. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I'll tell you, H.C., uh, we've been getting a lot of calls from Headleyville and Peaks Junction and all down the state line. They're looking for a fellow. Well, he's kind of a con man, uh, name of Tornado Johnson. Chisley? Uh, who, Lizzie? Well, I reckon she is. You, you get any wind of it? Who? Tornado Johnson. Nope. Tornado Johnson, alias Bill Harmony, alias Bill Smith. Well, I ain't never met anybody by any of those names. Anybody else come around here? Oh, you, Bob. Kind of a hot night to be asleep, ain't it? Oh, well, this is a good sleep. Good sleep. <laughs> yeah, it must be. No Tornado Johnson, huh? Seems fishy. Well, how do you think fishy? Well, Pedleyville, the junction, and Three Point, we all kind of figure this together, and, uh... Now, look, H.C., we know it ain't like he's a protected criminal. Really a criminal, huh? Well, he's wanted. Well, what's he wanted for, Father? Well, he's wanted in the state of Kansas. He sold 400 tickets to a great big rain festival. No rain, no festival. And in a small town in Nebraska, he drummed up a lot of excitement about a spectacular eclipse of the sun. And he held a thousand pairs of smoke eyeglasses to see it with. No eclipse. In the month of February, he sold 600 wooden poles, called them tornado rods. Claimed that if that town ever got hit by a tornado, the wind would just blow through like a gentle spring breeze and not hurt a thing. Well, when he left that town, got hit by every blow you could imagine. Windstorm, hailstorm, cyclone, and hurricane. Blew the rods off the roof and blew the town off the map. Well, did it ever get hit by a tornado? Well, no, it, it didn't. Well, that's all he guaranteed. That it wouldn't get hit by a tornado. <laughs> and it didn't. <laughs> well, you don't sound like no criminal to me. No, he don't. But we got to do something about him. We ain't locked up anybody in three weeks. <laughs> 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 Sheriff, I 
I'm sorry I can't help you on that one. Well, I got a feeling you can, you see. Huh? See, they say this fella carries a great big bass drum wherever he goes. <laughs> Whose drum is that? Uh, that's mine. Yeah. I'm figuring to be a drum. Two minutes. And who painted that big white arrow on the ground? Well, I did. And what do you figure, BHC, a whitewash painter? Maybe. Yeah. Whose wagon is that? Let's go see about that wagon, Bob. go so far, run so fast, never have time to ask, stop and ask myself no question. Well, if you did stop, what question would you ask? Well, I guess I'd say, uh, big man, where are you going? Big man, where are you going? I don't know. I reckon I better kiss you again. Didn't anybody ever kiss you before I did? Yes, once. When was that? It was about 12, I guess. There was a boy with freckles and red hair, and I thought he was the beginning of the world. He never paid me any mind. Then one day he was standing around with a lot of other boys, and suddenly he shot over to me, and he kissed me hard right on the mouth. For a minute, I was so stirred up. Then I saw him run back to the other kids and heard him say, I'll kiss anything on it there, even your old man's pig. So I ran home and up the back stairs and locked my door and looked at myself in the mirror. From that day on, I, I knew I was plain. Are you plain, Lizzie? No. I'm beautiful. Yes, you are. And when I leave here, don't you ever forget? I'll try to remember everything you ever said. Some nights I'm in the kitchen, 
washing the dishes. Pop's playing poker with the boys. Well, I watch him real close. And at first, I'll just see an ordinary middle-aged man, not very interesting to look at. And then minute by minute, I'll see things in him I never saw in him before. Good things and bad things. Queer little habits I never noticed he had. Suddenly, I know who he is. I love him so much I could cry. I want to thank God I took the time to see him real. Well, I ain't got the time. You ain't got no world except the one you make up in your head. Lizzie, I gotta tell you something. You were right. I am a liar and a con man and a fake. I never brought rain before, ever. Not a single raindrop. No. All my life. <laughs> trying to make a miracle. I'm a great big blowhard. No. They're all dreams. It's no good to live in your dreams. It's no good to live outside them either. Somewhere between the two. Yes. Lizzie, do you want me to uh, stay a little while longer? Did I hear you right? Not forever, just a few days. You're not fooling me, are you, Starbuck? No. Would you I mean, stay? Would you? A few days, yes. Oh, my goodness. Lizzie. I can't stand it. I just can't stand it. Lizzie. You look up at the sky and you cry for a star. You know you'll never get it. Then one day you look down and there it is, shining in your hand. Tell me where he is, please. 
Well, he left about an hour ago. Yeah. Where'd he go? Deadly Bill. How'd he go? His wagon's still here. Well, he, he took Jimmy's horse. Yeah. Yeah. He took my horse. I think you're lying. All of you. And what the hell's going on here anyway? I ask you questions and you tell me a pack of lies? And for what? A stranger, a man who don't mean anything to you. Or does he? Maybe you better answer that question, Lizzie. No, wait a minute! Wait a minute! They said you were asleep, but you weren't. Why'd they lie about that? Where were you, Lizzie? It has nothing to do with you. It's got a lot to do with me now. Tell me. I'm singing in the rain. Starbuck, run! Starbuck, go away, run! Starbuck! What's going on? Tell you to run! Sheriff, sure. you're under arrest. Give me my hundred dollars. <laughs> 